one of the other jobs that I had done for them, actually, it was literally kind of for CBS Sports, but it was also for the Patriots doing their headshots for um, the television game. So when you are sitting home watching the game or you're at the stadium watching the game and you see their stats with their heads pop up on the screen, those were our photos uh, that we, myself and Rob did over the past, well, over that time when we had worked for them over a few years. Um, so it was always interesting and fun to be able to work with um, with Tom Brady and Ron Gutkowski and Julian Edelman. And if you have a good photographer with you and excellent lighting, you are bound to get good photos. We have a blast every single time. I remember when we worked in the studio in Lawrence, uh, we did some fun branding kind of stuff with like a Pepsi and a strawberry. That was like our, pretty much our first full day of just having a lot of fun. And we had two different shoots. I think, oh, oh, it was my friend of mine, Mike, who was a fitness uh, Taekwondo instructor. And you came back and we did some fitness stuff. Those two shoots there, I really enjoyed doing. And then the one we did out in the field, that's some of my favorite. I feel more comfortable being outdoors doing photo shoots because I just love the sunlight and what it does at sunset and sunrise. Those are my favorite times of the day. I can agree with that. And I'm not even a photographer, but I myself, whenever I'm content creating or just want to take photos for fun, I will literally either A, do it outside if the weather permits, of course, or B, if it's going to be indoor, I want to kind of be near a window, right? Like that natural lighting is what makes everything look good. Even if you don't have makeup on, and Eric can attest to this, if you don't have makeup on, you have decently nice skin. You don't even need to wear makeup because that natural light just like puts some type of a glow on your face. Yes, It's absolutely beautiful. I love natural lighting. And as Eric is talking about, certain times of the day will give a different glow, not only on the camera, but also on your body. So if you shoot first thing in the morning, it's going to look a lot different than if you're shooting midday than if you're shooting at sunset, correct? Exactly. Exactly. I'd rather shoot at sunset late in the afternoon than in the morning because I'm not a morning person, but it's easier to shoot later afternoon because I'm already up and planned throughout the entire day. Instead of getting up tired, trying to think about how it's going to go, I'd rather just start the day fresh, plan the shoot, and then make it happen. If you were to shoot an early morning type of shot, where would that be set up? Like if you had a dream shoot outside and you had to get up at the butt crack of dawn, I know lately I've been following your content and you've been getting up very early to shoot these awesome, it looks like drone shots and also photos of lighthouse houses and sunrises, sunsets, like you're doing incredible work. I want to kind of reiterate and go back what you were asking about what it takes to get perfect shot. A lot of it has to do with planning. If you plan it, you're going to get what you're looking for. Sometimes you can't always count on the weather to be right, or you can't always count on everyone to be on set on time. But what I feel that takes the, to get that shot is planning. If you don't plan it, it's just luck. It's lucky you got the shot, which is great. And I know that there's plenty of people who are out there who are just happen to be in the right place the right time and got some absolutely incredible award-winning National Geographic type of stuff. But I, I enjoy planning it and knowing that this is what I had in my head. Um, particularly yesterday, I posted uh, one of the images from this weekend and it's exactly what I had in my head when I went to go there Saturday morning. That's the image I wanted and it just so happened that I got that photo because I planned to be there at the right time. That makes perfect sense, planning to be there at the perfect time. Pretty cool to see content like that created because I'm assuming you not only have to plan well and either a, you have to be lucky, kind of like Eric is talking about, but B, it's probably more so preparation and patience because if you're trying to get a shot of the moon coming up a certain way, you can't just, okay, I'm going to show up and in and out in five minutes because with the model, sometimes you can do that, right? You could get a couple quick shots, mm -hmm. you walk away. I feel like, and again, I'm no photographer, but I feel like working alongside a human, a model is a little bit easier than, okay, I have to wait for this bald eagle to swoop down at this specific time to hold hopefully land in front of me to get this specific shot. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, you're right. So for example, the bald eagles, um, I know where there's a location where there's a couple of them that I photograph and I've had a couple of friends of mine come with me to go and photograph them as well. And I told them that when you're shooting wildlife, it's unpredictable that they could be there or they could not be there. And if they are, they couldn't, they might stay for an hour or two before they even move. Both times I've taken my friends there, the bald eagles were there for two minutes and they took off. I've been there many a times and they were sitting there for like an hour or two, not moving. And that's the difference between planning photo shoot to get the shot that's more of patience because wildlife isn't going to show up on time they're not on the schedule so it's a lot of it is patience practice and time out in the field but the shots like for example the moon coming up behind the noble lighthouse i took a couple months ago there's actually an app that will allow you to know where exactly to stand to 
get that photo of the moon coming up directly behind the Nubble Lighthouse. So with a bit of planning, you definitely can get the shot you're always looking for, but it takes planning. It just doesn't fall in your lap unless, like I said, unless you're lucky and you have to be at the right place at the right time. Well, thank you for describing all of that because honestly, I had no idea what it took to get the perfect shot when you are watching something on Discovery Channel or you look at like National Geographic, the magazine. It's always one of those things where you wonder like, dang, I wonder how long it took to get that perfect shot of that alligator or that bird or how long did it take to have this documentary created on these whales? A lot of the times I feel like certain shots and or documentaries, especially when it involves animals or landscapes or time lapses can take ample amount of time because as Eric is talking about too, you can't plan for a bald eagle to be sitting there for an hour. It might only be there for freaking two seconds. It flies down. It doesn't like that branch or whatever the case may be. It starts raining out. It gets up and it flies away. With that being said, I do want to talk a little bit more about like actual modeling because again, that's how you and I met. And I do want to kind of segue into the Patriots cheer team. But I know we just spoke about how to get the perfect shot or at least attempt to get that perfect shot with both landscape and also animal life. When it comes to a human model, whether that be a baby, a male, a female, like we've been talking about a little bit of preparation, but also you can kind of control that a little bit more, right? Because more than likely, if it's a, an adult, they're going to be able to hopefully get there on time. Or you're hoping that if the weather isn't cooperating, you guys can move to a studio or an indoor location. It's all about preparation and teamwork. You have to have the right time, the right people to work with the swimsuit calendar. Um, everything is planned out. You can't just wing something like that to get the perfect shot. It goes just the same as if it's a landscape shot or if it's a shot with a person specifically looking for a look that I want to get and I got to plan it, which is going to take the right makeup artist. It's going to take the right clothing and it's going to take the right location. And if all that just falls into place, that's what ends up being like getting that perfect shot. But again, that perfect shot, it doesn't happen every shoot. Every shoot, I'm going to get amazing images, but I might not get that perfect, perfect shot. That makes any sense. No, that does make complete sense. And going back to what we've been talking about as well with the whole having the team, having the preparation, hoping that these people show up on time, hoping that your makeup artist is there when you need them to be. And then when it comes to actually taking the photograph, that must be difficult as well, because you probably want a little bit of input from the photographer, from the creative director, also the model, that way they feel comfortable. So kind of walk us through that mindset, right? If you're working with the New England Patriots cheerleader team, I'm sure they have a vision but you as a photographer and your assisting photographer, if you have one for the day, how do you guys all collectively sit there and say, okay, I have this vision, cheerleading squad has this vision, but now the model needs to be comfortable with doing certain things. So how do you guys collectively agree on what to do and how to get the perfect shot? Well, for example, when it had to do with the calendar shoot, everything is planned out. We know what outfits each person's going to wear and we already have locations scouted out either that day or the day before. So we're going to take um, Melissa over here at sunset. She's going to wear this bathing suit. I know where everybody's going to be. My job is going to be just to direct the model to give me the best that she can. And that's my job. Everybody else's job is done. Now it's my job to make sure that she knows how to perform and I can show her and tell her and direct her which is the right angles and how to pose properly and get that perfect shot. So as far as working with a company and or group like the New England Patriots cheerleaders, how exciting was that? How did you get to book that gig? Who are you working alongside? I know you did it for a number of years, so your work is in a few of their calendars. Where did you guys shoot this content? Did you go on location? Was it local? I got the uh, position because of my friend Rob, Robert Hare, was doing the 2018 calendar. I believe it was 17, and he was assisting prior to that. But when it came to the 2019 calendar that year, his dad wasn't doing so well. So he asked me prior to the shoot if I could possibly take over for him in case he can't make it, just so his mind was in the right place because we don't want to mess it up. He wanted to have a right mindset. I ended up getting that position as the photographer, the lead photographer for the 2019 calendar because um, Rob couldn't make it. And then I had Justin, who was his assistant as well, Justin Mayotte, and I ended up having him and we ended up going down St. Martin to shoot the calendar. But the thing was, is six months prior to that, they had just gotten hit by a direct uh, category five hurricane. So half of the island was just completely destroyed and the other half was just not in good shape. So we literally had to make the best of what we could out of that situation and produce an amazing calendar from that. So awesome that you were able to go to a location, shoot some great content. Unfortunate to hear that they had just recently got hit by a hurricane, but I mm -hmm. wonder 
wonder if the Patriots, because they already had their whole game plan planned out that they were like, okay, we still have to go here. We have to continue the work. We have all the shots set up. That 2019 calendar was actually going to be done in Cancun that year, but maybe a month and a half prior to that, there was some incidents in Cancun where there was tourists that got killed. Uh, we suggested it wasn't a good idea to go to Cancun to do the calendar shoot. So it took about a week of planning and they ended up going with St. Martin. Okay. So that makes sense why they had to kind of change gears. Originally, mm -hmm. they wanted to go to Mexico and then they switched to somewhere else. And that's like I said, this is, that's just like behind the scenes stuff that a lot of people don't know. It's like a lot of logistics and a lot of planning to go into something like that. And again, it's, if you want to get the results that you're looking for, it, it takes planning. And, and again, you know, the Patriots, they were at that time, it was a dynasty. Everything had to be perfect. What were some of your top memories shooting with the New England Patriots cheerleaders, whether it be the location that you guys went to? It was the location. It was it was fantastic. I've been to St. Martin prior to that uh, when I was in the Navy. I knew the island a little bit. Even though they had been hit by a hurricane, it's still such a beautiful island. That was probably my favorite time was doing that calendar because of just being able to be the lead photographer for something I've been wanting to do for a while. Do you remember any specific shots that you shot? Were you at like a shipwreck or sitting behind like a tiki bar? Was most of it done at the beach all day long shoot? Was it scattered over like a week or did you guys do it all in a couple of days? Give us some insider detail on these shoots because again, my listeners, you guys, all you see is the final product, right? You see the calendar, you see the photos up on social media, but a lot of people don't know what goes into these actual photo shoots. Typical day starts out before the sunrise, about an hour prior to that to get to the location, myself and my assistant. The girls are getting ready two hours, two and a half hours prior to that, getting hair and makeup ready with a different room. We'll go out to the location with a flashlight to try to find our way. But again, we scouted the location prior so we knew where we're going. And once we get there, we're on set and we're shooting until like noon. We'll take a break for lunch and then we'll come back out and shoot all the way until sunset in the summertime. Down there, it's probably from 6 a.m. until 7, 8 p.m. So it's a good 13, 14 hour day. A lot of people are always like, well, you get the best job in the world, blah, 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 blah. It's still 14 hour days in the hot weather. It's a great place to work. There's worse place to work. I'm not really complaining about that. The hardest part photographing down there is the humidity, working with the gear. We learned a few things and troubleshoot a few things over the past few years. All in all, I think they just put out a fantastic calendar. They do put out a fantastic calendar and I've actually flipped through them myself and on top of that you already know this but i'm friends with a number of the new england patriots cheerleaders a lot of the former ones have come on here and they themselves have talked about how fun it has been being involved in these calendar shoots doing the live events and having their awesome photos be showcased on their social media up on the website kudos to the photographers like yourself and everybody else that is currently working with them now but it sounds like it would be a dream job as a photographer to go on location shoot that content have it be kind of just spread out all over the Patriots world. And as you mentioned, at the time of you working with them, they were very well known as a dynasty. So to have your work be showcased in such a way must have been so amazing. One of the other jobs that I had done for them, actually, it was literally kind of for CBS Sports, but it was also for the Patriots doing their headshots for um, the television game. So when you are sitting home watching the game or you're at the stadium watching the game and you see their stats with their heads pop up on the screen, those were our photos uh, that we, myself and Rob did over the past well, over that time when we had worked for them over a few years. Um, so it was always interesting and fun to be able to work with um, with Tom Brady and Ron Gronkowski and Julian Edelman and all those guys back when we had the dynasty going on. Talking about some of these professional athletes that you got to work alongside, aside from just the New England Patriots cheerleaders, who they themselves, of course, are athletes, professional dancers. Did you enjoy being able to take headshots of, as you just spoke about, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman? Did any of them showcase their personalities while you worked alongside them oh yeah absolutely everybody did particularly julian he's uh awesome he likes to talk a lot kind of took up some time we we're like we gotta go julian tom's coming in but tom brady was one of the uh, interesting ones i didn't photograph it uh, at the time rob was doing it and i was setting up the lighting getting ready for him he was in and out probably three minutes we had two minutes of him in the studio one of those minutes was him doing the video for cbs sports with the green screen the other 30 seconds was rob taking his photos and one of the funny things about it is um, when Rob started taking Tom Brady's photos, um, I forgot to turn the light on, the key light to actually light him up. So the first few shots didn't come out, but the rest of them did. So we got some great shots of Tom that, that day. Well, that's exciting. Thank you for sharing that because again, this kind of just plays into the fact that obviously this is a lifestyle sports podcast. I'm sure people are enjoying hearing about some of the professional athletes that you also worked alongside. Any of these NFL players that you worked with that you enjoyed photographing because they did showcase their personality or they did kind of act a little bit more personable with you or is it all strictly business? 
business, like in and out? Everybody's pretty much strictly business, but I, I would have to say the one that's more just loves to hang and talk is Julian. I think a year and a half later, I was contacted to shoot a magazine cover in Boston. He said, uh, we're going to have Julian Element on the cover. Do you want to do it? I'm like, yep. Yeah. But we didn't have a location. So the magazine asked me to find a location. I ended up securing a rooftop on Newberry Street and doing the photo shoot up there with Julian Edelman. And it turned out to be a really great time because not only the photo shoot was great because he's just fun to work with, but we ended up throwing the ball around myself and Rob and, and Mo and everybody having a little bit of fun before we uh, finished up the photo shoot. So yeah, Julian Edelman's just a fun guy to hang out and play with. Let's talk about landscapes. I want to hear a little bit more about landscapes. Like we've been talking about it often on this whole episode, but any final words that you can talk about as far as landscapes and animals? And where do you see yourself in the next five or six years advancing that type of photography? Landscape photography, like I said, that's where I kind of got started doing landscape photography. I kind of dabbled in it in astrophotography for about a year, which is trying to get images of galaxies and, and nebulas that are millions and millions of light years away. I found it very interesting and I love space because I'm just a, a nerd when it comes to that stuff. But it's such a huge learning curve and it's a very, very, very expensive hobby. And I thought it's probably not something I want to do. So I kind of moved on and I started working with people doing like senior photos and family photos, but it wasn't until I came back up here in New England and I started working with models and working with agencies and then stuff with the Patriots. Over the last few years, I've kind of, as an artist, you kind of evolve and you kind of change your style and, and what you do as a photographer. And I found myself more drawn to going to landscape photography because of the beauty of it and just being able to be out in nature, even if I'm not taking photos, I'm just out side, just enjoying the scenery, just enjoying being outside. And it satisfies me on the inside. I still do a lot of uh, work, not so much models, but more with people. And then again, over the last year with wildlife photography, because I just find that very fascinating. I'm actually, another quick story, I've been literally looking, last winter, I photographed two snowy owls, but for the last two years, I've been on the hunt, photograph any other type of owl. And I'm telling you, I have spent many of hours trekking through the woods, trekking through the forests, looking for an owl. And again, that kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier. It's it's just about luck and about timing and being at the right place at the right time when it comes to wildlife. When it comes to landscape, I really love it. I've been doing a lot of drone photography, a lot of drone video for the last three to four years. I think since I lived at Hampton Beach, I'm living in Manchester now, geared more towards doing a lot more video than I have still photos. But I just love doing both. Right now, I'm kind of pushing towards video and I have some big plans coming up pretty soon this year to kind of push the envelope and do things a little bit different than what I have been doing in the last past particularly it's going to be video. That's why I'm really starting to push my YouTube channel because I'm trying to get more subscribers on there because uh, what I'm planning on putting together. Go ahead and shout out your YouTube channel. We will be talking about that very soon as well because I do want to hear what types of content you have up there already. I know that I just went ahead and I gave it a follow recently and yeah. I want my listeners to go ahead and give you a follow. So shout out your YouTube channel. Oh, it's uh, Eric Snyder Photography. <laughs> Pretty simple. At Eric Snyder Photography. Perfect. So that is E-R-I-C-S-N Y-D-E-R. So if you guys are not familiar with how to spell his first or last name, you can go ahead and just research that. All of his social media is exactly the same, even his Instagram, which has a good amount of followers. He has over 40,000 followers, which is pretty impressive for a photographer. Again, his Instagram is simply at Eric Snyder Photography. Again, that is E-R-I-C-S-N-Y-D-E-R photography. Please go ahead, give him a follow, keep up with everything that he has going on. Before we start to wrap up this podcast, I wanted to ask you, is there anything in particular you wish that you could shoot? I know you kind of just mentioned getting some content with snowy owls and it's hard to find them and trudging through the woods to get that perfect shot. Is there anything or any person you would love to shoot or a particular landscape or travel somewhere to get the perfect shot of whatever that happens to be? It would be Iceland literally on my bucket list to, to photograph and to be at is Iceland um, just due to the landscape. And it, and it wouldn't be just landscape because I plan on at least bringing one or two models, particularly I've mentioned about uh, the designer with the parachute dress. So I have these ideas that I want to shoot big high-end fashion stuff up in Iceland. Um, it's been done before, but I want to do it the way I want to do it. And particularly for drone photography and drone video, the volcanoes up there with, with a model would be insane. Well, I know that you are a perfectionist with everything that you do, especially photography. Again, that was one of the main reasons why I enjoyed working with you was that professionalism, was that the attention to detail and wanting to have things look perfect. Is there anything 
something you would want to improve on. And the reason why I ask that is, again, I do have young listeners. I do have parents tuning into this podcast. And for somebody that's out there trying to get into this career path, even though your work might be A+, plus, there's always some room for improvement in any type of career, whatever that happens to be. Eric, what would you want to improve? Marketing and business skills. If you have a good marketing and business motivation and you know what it takes, that's going to help take your career. I mean, if it's photography, it could be anything, um, but a, a good business and marketing plan will help you be more successful. I can go back and do that. I would probably do that better. But as most artists know, we're artists. We're not the best at marketing. I didn't become a photographer. I didn't become, an, I'm not an artist because I wanted to be a good marketing person or business strategy person. I, I love doing that. So I would have probably hired someone or you should hire someone or, or don't hire, just have an intern or assistant for that type of a job. I think there was a saying, I'm trying to remember what how it goes. It was our artists aren't the best businessmen and businessmen aren't the best artists. If that makes sense. No, I can completely agree with that. And going off of what you're saying is in this day and age, it's one of those things where back in the day, it was kind of, if you were just a photographer, you were just a photographer. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but like you would literally show up with your equipment and shoot the photos and you weren't necessarily in charge of marketing, right? Or if you were the news broadcaster, you were just in charge of maybe writing up your script and delivering that script. You didn't have to create funny TikToks to market your work to hope to get another job. I'll use this last example. People like Michael Jordan, right? Back in the day, he was just a skilled, talented person. People knew who he was before Instagram, before Facebook, before that was even a thing. Nowadays, if Michael Jordan was up and coming, he probably would have to be putting up reels and skits and all kinds of stuff just to get his sneakers sold. So I'm kind of liking that you're bringing that up because I myself even find that I'm having to create more content. I work alongside brands and I enjoy doing it. But if I had somebody else helping me out, it would be a little bit easier. And being a content creator isn't always the easiest job in the world. It's fun because you can do it from wherever. But sometimes you hit a road bump or like a brain fart. and You're like, dang, like I'm not feeling that creative today. What do I do? I just want to do what I'm good at. So as far as Eric is mentioning the marketing standpoint, you kind of need to be a jack or a jill of all trades this day and age. And if you don't want to be a jack or a jill of all trades, then as he's mentioning, go ahead and get an assistant or somebody to help you out. That way you can kind of tackle all of those tasks. One of the big things I would say, you kind of hit it on it like jack of all trades, but when it comes to photography as an artist, I would probably suggest to try to be the best at a particular genre of photography, whether it's portraits, whether it's headshots, whether it's sports, whether it's anything, be the best of it at that, because that's what people are going to want to hire you for. If you start doing a lot of different things, let's just say you, um, you're doing weddings and you're doing kid photography and headshots and Reebok is looking for a photographer to do their new campaign. They're not going to hire a wedding photographer. They're not going to hire a car photographer. They're going to hire somebody that knows fitness or knows product photography. So that's just something to look for when you are deciding what you want to do. Do and enjoy everything, but your main goal should be just pursuing one particular type of genre in photography and the best at it because that's what people will hire you for. That is some great tips and advice. As we start to wrap up the photography talk because we're going to segue into your YouTube channel next, but as far as the different trends and social media and where things are going, where do you see your particular work trending? And as far as being a content creator, tell us about your YouTube channel. Well, as far as my YouTube channel, it's um, I've uploaded a lot of my drone work, particularly is what I kind of started for because I just love drone photography and doing a lot of time lapse. It's kind of how I started out my YouTube channel. I think I probably have like, I don't know, maybe about 40 some odd videos. I, I just want to kind of kick it off my YouTube more because of the things that I have planned coming up. I like to wrap up each of my podcast episodes with something that I like to call positive pop. And Eric, that can be anything, right? It could be feeling down. You like to read something. I don't know if you have like a book that sits next to you that gets you up and going in the morning when you're feeling down or like a specific song, or maybe there's like a photograph that you took that you have hanging in your bed where if you're not having a good day, you go ahead and you go look at that. And that gives you some inspiration. So Eric, what exactly is your positive pop? My positive pop? Thing. I got so many different ones, but most of them come from something that somebody's already said it before. No amount of money is ever about a second of time. I find that time is very important. It's, it's uh, something you can't get back. So for me, don't be late. <laughs> that's my that's my positive thing. I can think of some other ones, but that's one of my favorite ones. Nobody's ever bought a second of time. Value your time and also value other people's time around you. I hope to get you back on this podcast again at some point. You guys listening, I want to thank you for tuning in. So Eric, thank you again for coming on here. I learned a lot about you myself. That'll be cool.